Salary Negotiation Workshop. Um, this workshop is brought to you by Career Services and the Advising Retention and Career Center. So jumping into salary negotiation, first I want to chat a little bit about why it's important to negotiate. So um, thinking about this kind of on the front end as you're getting ready uh, for the job search, you want to be sure that you're getting paid what you're worth. So there is a lot of front end work that needs to happen. Um, you don't just go into the salary negotiation and negotiate. Um, it's important to have everything in line before then. Um, and another important reason as to why you should negotiate is so that you don't leave money on the table. So the steps that we are going to take tonight and talk through each one of these um, is knowing your value, benchmarking your salary, creating a budget, um, and then finally the biggest part we're going to be chatting about is the actual negotiation itself and how to step into um, the room or into that phone call and have that conversation. So the first thing, knowing your value. This is really important um, just to be able to understand and know what your expectations are coming into it, but then also knowing um, how you, uh, I guess, kind of fit within a certain salary range. So really thinking about what do you bring to the table. So thinking about your past experiences that are related to that position, um, the field, what additional skills or experiences do you have to offer. Um, so kind of thinking about um, you know, outside of just exactly related experience, can you justify your value based off of additional experience? So for example, maybe you had an internship. Obviously, um, if it's an internship related to your field, it's gonna be really easy to kind of walk through how you have previous experience. But then thinking about um, additional skills, maybe you um, want to talk about your service learning. Uh, maybe there are certain skills you gain from that that you feel are really valuable um, and can be brought to an organization. As well as thinking about coursework, um, different kinds of coursework, maybe a, a capstone project or um, uh, academic projects that you've worked with a group on that you've had to present or um, maybe your writing skills um, and how that really enhances your skill set. So not only is it important to be reflective on knowing your value, but it's also important that you have specific examples um, so that when whoever you're talking to about um, your salary and trying to justify a certain number that you don't just say, oh, I have this skill set, but you're actually able to back it up with your previous experiences to show your overall value. So after knowing your value, it's important to then take that and benchmark your salary. So um, if you're going to get the pay you deserve, it's crucial you know the rate of your position uh, within a specific industry and within a specific geographic area. Uh, if you walk into a salary negotiation without a specific number or a specific range, you're really at the mercy of the experienced hiring manager who's quite honestly going to control that conversation. So kind of looking in and doing your research, um, two really good sites to check um, and see different pay um, salaries um, based off of location. Again, I can't emphasize the importance of that. Um, our salary.com or glassdoor.com. So Glassdoor is um, a little bit more where um, individuals who are in those positions are posting. So um, there may be some biases there. So just be mindful of that where salary.com is actually based off of tax information. So both would be nice to check out just to kind of compare the two, uh, but it can really give you a good idea for within a specific industry position and geographic area, what kind of salaries you could think about. And it's important to, to target a range um, where you have some wiggle room on both sides. So having your ideal number, uh, but be open uh, for, for a range that you can have that discussion and show that you're flexible, um, but then just being sure that you um, are making that bottom end of the salary range something that you would still accept. So something to, to think about, um, a lot of times when people hear benefits, they automatically think salary and um, compensation that way. However, there's a lot more to benefits than just salary. So as you're thinking about um, going into negotiation as you're starting the job search process, really think about not only salary, what what is that range that you're looking for, but what are you looking for in other benefits? 
So paid time off, um, different kinds of insurance, retirement plans, maybe tuition reimbursement is important to you, opportunities for advancement. Um, is that something that you can see uh, within the position you're stepping into? Is that important for you? Um, professional development and any additional kinds of training. So thinking about seminars, conferences, um, even just uh, like on the job training or um, anything along those lines. So again, have these kind of in the back of your mind uh, because these can also be brought to the table when you're negotiating. So maybe, um, you know, paid time off is really important to you and they're hitting the lower end of that salary range that you're looking for, but ideally, you know, you would like a little bit higher. This is kind of another way that you can leverage um, obtaining more benefits. Um, to to get that ideal area or range of benefits that you're looking for. So next, it's important to create a realistic budget. Um, actually, physically having a budget can can really help not only hold you accountable, but uh, as you're planning for your salary, having an understanding of where your money is going and how much you actually need. So this can kind of help you um, determine the the kinds of positions that you're looking for um, based off of of what you're needing on on your budget in terms of fixed expenses so determine a budgeting tool uh, whether you prefer to do um, paper and pen versus something that's online there's a lot of different online budgeting tools uh, the one um, you know, sometimes people even prefer just doing like an Excel spreadsheet and kind of creating your own. Um, really creating something that, that works for you is important. And not only something that works for you, but something that you continue to turn back to. Don't just create a budget and forget about it. So things to consider within your budget. And again, this is really based off of location. If you're thinking about relocating, um, be sure that you are mindful and aware of um, how much expenses are to the place that you're moving. So thinking about rent, thinking about, you know, is gas more expensive? Is it going to take more to fill up my car? Uh, thinking about groceries um, and those kind of um, additional expenses that you have here, but maybe a little bit more or less expensive depending on where you go. So things to, to consider on your budget, income or incomes, um, having some sort of savings, your fixed expenses, so every month you have to pay these and they're going to be this amount, um, variable expenses, so things that change month to month, um, as well as anticipating any future expenses. So uh, typically loans don't kick in until after um, a few months after you graduate, really thinking about, you know, what am I going to have to be paying back in the future? Maybe you, it's on your radar that you want to buy a new car. Thinking about, oh, I'm going to have to be paying uh, for a car coming up. So um, anticipating those is also really important to think about in your budget, especially since um, you're in the job search now, but, you know, you'll hopefully be in that job by the time these new expenses will happen, so you need to account for them. It's also really important that when you're thinking about your income, you're actually calculating your take-home pay. So a $45,000 salary might sound great, but that's not going to be what you take home. So don't forget about taxes. Um, and PaycheckCity.com is a website that can really help you um, based off of state, based off of, of salary, see what your month to month would be um, and how much you would be bringing in. Um, and you have some different options for, for kind of calculating that out. If you would be paid you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, you'd be able to see about like how much each paycheck would be for you. Something else to just think about um, as kind of a negotiating, t or not negotiating, um, as a budget creating tool is the 50-20-30 rule. Again, um, something to, to kind of help you get started when thinking about um, where your money is going and how much money you will need is 50% of your income should be going towards necessities, housing, food, utilities, 20% um, towards financial goals, so savings, retirement, debt reduction, um, and 30% towards flexible spending. Something to, to also think about is um, as you're creating a budget, understanding, um, you know, the salary that you would be getting for your position, um, don't expect of, you know, I really want to live in this high class apartment. Um, this is the salary I need to be able to um, fix that 
you know, base it off your salary and then go from there in terms of what can you afford. Um, and that's where this tool can really come into play uh, where thinking about it more in terms of percentages. So some negotiation um, questions and answers, kind of moving more into the actual negotiation um, side of, of preparation for um, this in the job search. So when do I negotiate? A, a very popular question. You should not negotiate until after you have um, a written official offer. So not until you know you know that they want you in that position. You should stop or um, not negotiate. Just um, you don't want to you know skew any decisions. You want to know that it's it's something that they want you to have. So how do you pick a number to negotiate? And this is really important that you base this off of your research. So that's why you should be checking out you know what is the typical salary for this position in this area within this industry. Um, and then from that, thinking about what kind of range you would offer based off of you know, your specific examples and your specific experience as to why you're worth that amount. Um, list, again, your lowest acceptable salary at the bottom of that range. Don't have the low end of that range be something that you don't want and you wouldn't accept. Um, if you know, a hiring manager asks you what your range is. Um, if you say a low-end number, it should be something that you would accept at. But how can I ensure that I am prepared? Um, preparing your discussion points ahead of time and bringing them with you can help kind of ease the nerves with negotiating, as well as just ensure that you kind of know your value and know why you're justifying a certain salary. Again, doing your homework ahead of time. Um, it's hard to walk into a salary negotiation not knowing um, the facts behind it. Uh, it makes it a lot harder to justify as to why you should be earning a certain salary. As well as practicing your salary negotiation skills, um, here in Career Services, uh, we're happy to, to help you kind of walk through step by step this conversation would go, um, kind of planning out what exactly you would say, how to introduce the topic, and even um, just kind of helping uh, to, to navigate and handle some of those objections that may happen. So another really popular question is, what if they ask me before, or about salary before there's an offer? So again, don't negotiate salary until there's an offer on the table. Uh, so these are just some examples of things that you could say to kind of um, steer away from that question. So I'm willing to negotiate once there's an official offer. I'm truly interested in the job uh, and I'm sure we can come to an agreement. You could ask, can I have a sense of the range this job pays? Uh, I really need to know more about where I fit within the organization and the requirements of the job and your expectations. I'd really like to make a salary appropriate with my experiences. Uh, this is not so much about the money for me. I'm more focused on the job, the challenge, uh, the company culture, and finding the right home for myself. I'm sure we can settle on an agreement that's mutually agreeable. So as you can see, yes, they're kind of... Um, you know, fluffier answers, but that's exactly what you're wanting to, to do. You're wanting to show your interest in the position, not your interest in the salary. Uh, so really avoid giving a number. Um, and if they really, 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 really push, um, and if you need to, be sure you have your research done ahead of time. And again, that's why it's really important that you start this as you're kind of starting the job search process of getting into into the mindset of this is what I'm what I'm looking for, I'm going to be prepared, um, but I'm not going to bring it up unless they do. So thinking about um, initiating the negotiation. So again, you receive that offer. Um, be sure you're taking time to consider, um, really thinking about, again, not only what is the compensation, but what is the, the whole um, benefits package itself, but not just looking at the salary part of compensation. Um, determine what you would like to negotiate, if anything. It is totally fine to not negotiate if um, the offer is at something that you would want to accept at. Um, it's important then to contact the recruiter. It's best to negotiate over the phone or in person. Um, 
if you do it via email, they have more time to think of a way to say no. Where if it's more immediate on the spot, um, it's, it's kind of easier to get into the flow of that conversation. Um, it's then important to, you know, as you reaching out to them, um, chatting with them, be sure you're expressing interest in the position. You do want them to know that um, you're in this because you're really excited about the position. Um, the reason you're negotiating is because it's something that, you know, you actually, you want and you just want it to meet, um, you know, a, a certain salary that uh, you determine ahead of time that you are looking for. Uh, be sure to thank the employer for the offer um, and then bring up your your benefit concerns. It's important then that you not only say, you know, this is a little bit lower than I was anticipating, um, I was looking for around this number, uh, but then that's where you insert your, your research and your added value. So really back up your concerns with why they're your concerns. And then um, that's kind of where, where the back and forth can happen. So it's really important to go in, again, knowing, you know, what do you want to leave with, and then ending the initiating or ending the negotiation with either accepting or declining the offer. So some common objections uh, within salary negotiation is that's not within our budget right now. Again, it's really important that you can point out um, and communicate your value to the employer. Um, sometimes, you know, you should point out that it's below the market value where you know, you're showing, hey, I did my research based off of where we're living. This is usually where it's at. Um, and then your number should be based off of that. So ensuring that you're, you're backing it up with not only research, but then um, your experience. Again, continue to show interest in the job. Um, but you can also mention that you just can't justify accepting less than the market value. So another really common objection is other employees with similar qualifications aren't paid that much. Again, having specific examples to support your argument, maybe you have a more specific degree that, that matches the job, or maybe you had, um, you know, you have experience coming into it uh, that's related to the position. Um, you may even want to offer to take on additional responsibilities to kind of offset that higher salary. Um, and you can also discuss performance-based bonuses. So maybe, you know, you can't be at that ideal salary right away, but maybe they can offer it to you in six months after you've proved that, um, that, you, can, that you can do the job and that you can hit these benchmarks that they're looking for. So that's something to also bring up, again, with thinking about bonuses, um, and really any kind of offer or agreement is you always want to get it in writing um, just to be able to, in those six months, when you meet those, those benchmarks that you can bring up that conversation again. Um, and the last one is if it's our policy, or it's our policy not to negotiate. The first thing you want to do is you actually want to research if that's true or not. Sometimes it's used as a kind of closing point to, to stop the negotiation. Um, if it is true, however, you may not be able to negotiate salary. However, you can still negotiate non-cash benefits. So thinking about that vacation time, um, you know, tuition reimbursement, things along those lines, professional development, um, thinking about what else matters to you uh, that could make up for um, not being able to negotiate the salary itself. So once you have that final offer, um, you know, it's important to know when to quit. You don't want to frustrate a potential employer or seem like you're greedy or um, that you're just going to continue to fight until you get what you want. Eventually, um, there is a breaking point. So know, um, you know, just kind of based off of the cues around you. And that's why it's also um, nice to do salary negotiation either over the phone or um, in person is that you can read those a lot better. Um, you know, once you have agreed upon a salary and benefits package, uh, be sure to ask for it in writing. That's extremely important um, to, to get that agreed upon arrangement in writing. Um, be sure that as you're going through uh, the, the negotiation itself that you're taking note on what the end uh, result was so that you can also compare that to um, the confirmation that, and 
and contract that they give you. Uh, so you want to be sure you're reviewing the written summary that they provide carefully um, actually before signing it. So kind of one final confirmation, yes, this is all right, um, and then signing it, and then you can start um, getting ready to start that new job um, at, at a, a benefits package in salary um, that's of interest to you, um, all thanks to negotiation. So that is all that I have. I welcome any and all questions. Again, I can't emphasize enough um, how much um, it helps to, to come into career services just to practice this for yourself. Um, a lot of times it's very much a, a case by case um, kind of scenarios with um, how to practice in, in best strategies. So figuring out what's going to work best for you and thinking of specific examples for you uh, will be really important. So uh, you can find us in Old Library 2100. Again, Career Services is part of the Advising Retention and Career Center. That is all I have. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, the, the feedback link is right on the bottom of the screen. Again, we appreciate any feedback. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can find us in the Advising Retention and Career Center. We are happy to help. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great night.